They've released the beta. There was a massive backlash about the character looks. This lady right here has made design uh, that went viral. I did not know her, so she shared this. I've even shared her shared this without even knowing who she was. Previous stream, we went down the rabbit hole discovering who she was. She worked for Ankama, what she did. Blah, 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 blah. She got fired. They sued her. She did something naughty with their uh, IP. And now, because of all the attention she's getting, she made a response video, a 10 part response video, which we are getting into. Part one is how subjects that you're trying to spam. No, Colibri, there is no. I have nothing against her. There is no idea of taking back an old employee or. There were some very bad topics um, within the company. Uh, we don't want to go back. The things that she posted were nothing. We never asked for those. They were not done in the right conditions. And everything that was proposed from there was never something that we were able to integrate in the game to begin with. I have nothing personally against her. And when I arrived at Ankama, I've, I've known her very scarcely. I don't even spoke with her or something. But no, her uh, designs will not be integrated in the game. They will not be integrated in the game. Which is, I just want to make it clear. It's not something that is integrable or we, that we will integrate in the game. End of the story. That was the origin of it, right? So she, she thinks she's doing something good by getting close to what she thinks is the source. Holy, I can already see the problems coming in the horizon. <laughs> oh no. Holy shit. So the story is not what we thought it was. It's a completely different beast. It's an accident that she did not intend for and that the company is having to deal with despite not wanting to deal with that. It's unintended consequences of her not being able to log into the company network from home because of COVID. Holy shit, what? What? That is nuts. This man is the most. Hello everyone, I'm doing this video to answer the diverse and wide array of questions I have received and uh, I have been asked uh, because I think that so for those of you who only know me since these characters, these images that I've posted I present myself very rapidly I'm known under the pseudo Colibri I've worked three years at Ankama at the, the her job title was uh, 2D Graphist so the person who does the graphic, you surely will have seen some of my work pass in front of you. Here are some examples. Uh, her role simply, my role, her, is simply to conceive of items for a marketing or event purpose uh, for games like Dofus 2, Retro, Touch, Wakfu, and some items you can find in some sets, just like the, you know, these ones that we're seeing here, Livy items, some costumes, some pets, pet mounts, and even ornaments. So she's made that ornament, which I've never seen before. So let's go back to our characters here. And I will answer about, about why I have conceived, in which context I've conceived them, why they resemble, why they look like they look now, and, that, and more and more and more. So for this we have to go back in time. We are in March 2020, Macron makes the announcement that shocks everyone and puts us in confinement. So this is the beginning of uh, teletravail, which is uh, work from home but also the beginning of my problems. Given the fact that I did not have a work laptop, or PC rather, given that I did not have a work PC, uh, but she only had her own personal computer to use for work, I had to reinstall everything. So so if Animate Flash, so the, if this software that we're seeing here uh, was easier to install on her personal machine, it was not the case for the Ankama network. That which allows you to receive and send projects, I would think securely, she didn't put securely, but I added it. And as well as other things on top of just communication that were sadly blocked for me, for her. For a reason that I ignore, it did not, simply did not work for my PC. Uh, but that did not stop me from working. So if I could not work and that I could not go back to the physical uh, uh, office at that time, but how, how was I going to make it happen? How was I going to make it work? So that was the question that I was that was being posed with my old manager at the time. And I remember that we talked about costumes. And you will have noticed that there are simply very little uh, in amount. In the total amount, there's very little costumes in Dofus 2, generally. And there is a reason behind it. The character, the skeletal character of every cat of... Uh, 
well, the skeletal body of characters is simply too obsolete, and she's putting the emphasis on the too obsolete. Uh, they have not been conceived and created as a base for this kind of thing. She's talking about costumes. When they were made, they were not designed for costumes to be a thing that happened onto them. And so it took an enormous amount of work, which we did not have. There was this idea at the time to do costumes per class. So class costumes, uh, so that they could ha have a different uh, appearance, general appearance. This is an example of what she means. So this is the costume that is just for the Hopper Mage that gives it a distinct appearance but it's specialized to the Hopper Mage because every class has its own skeletal body in Flash which is no longer the case in uh, Unity and that's why they sort of look the same right now. Right, so she was working on class costumes and uh, this is what they would look like and the workload was simply incredible at that time to have to do them. As you can observe right now, the characters are two-dimensional, right? They are 2D. And then we move on to the next one. Part 2. Uh, somebody else's design, but she was working on it. Twinks is the one who made these particular designs, but she was put on the task of making these things. She was working on them. So as you can see, the characters are two-dimensional. So you had to work them on five faces. Front, back, the sides. Five faces, five sides. Male, female. On 18 classes. Do we have a math major here with us in chat to give us the final result? So she needs to make 180 designs. Oof, that sounds like a mega piece of work. And so we start by conceiving the current characters who are more than eight years of age and we'll rapidly look over them. So the characters were conceived on a scale that is minuscule, so they are super tiny. So to do specific and very detailed work on their skeletal body is incredibly difficult and tedious. Look, she's having to zoom because she's bringing that which was minuscule to make it big. And it's not simple or easy to do precise things when you're animating them, for example. So unlike Illustrator, so yeah, so now she's zooming in Illustrator to show us why it's easy to do work on this software as opposed to the other one. Well, there is no pixel scale, so you can see if I get in here, I have difficulty moving or modifying the forms. So it's not very clean. And I found a technique to remedy this. So she would do a big form that she would put as part of a group that she calls symbols, and then she would reduce it to the right size. And this way so so that here the form in the interior would keep its superior scale I don't know what I mean it's the technical illustrator stuff and it will allow me to work on it much easier so you've understood what I mean trying to make a costume nice that looks good with this constraint was not an easy task at all but on top of all of this you have to un take into account another detail. So you can see the group symbols that I've talked to you about here. She's moving them. Well, every uh, part of these characters, they have a symbol name. I don't know what that means. That are connected, interconnected between them. So these symbols are interconnected between them. Which means uh, the full ensemble of the character or even the character itself or the same group name. I hate technical translations. Uh is the same number of symbols. I don't know what this means. So if you want to change the symbol of the uh, arm, for example, well, you had to replace it on all the other arms. Okay, so if you change one, then you have to... Okay, I see what she means there. And it's the same functioning for items. So when you put an item on the head of a character, it will be added on all heads. This is why the animations are strange on some characters. F because the animation is done on a basic skeletal body. It's implanted on all the other characters later on who do not necessarily have the same body shape. Yeah, this is why you have this connects with the eye up and thing like that. I see what she means here. I don't know if I'm making myself clear. She's trying, but I'm having a hard time personally because I'm not... I don't know what sh the technical stuff she's talking about. But the explanation remains complex to create... But, but it explains the complexity of creating costumes generally. Right, so what from my understand here is every character looks the same, but she has to make the costume on one character and then apply it to all the other ones. And what happens as a result is because they don't have the same shape, you have disconnects when you have animations and characters look weird and wonky. This explains the complexity of creating costumes to begin with, number one. And number two, of having fluid animations. 
after that without the the body parts that get cut and things so the animators had to work on classes case by case after she did her work and gave it to the rest of the team so it made the workload tremendous and huge and we were lacking time so the workload was massive and they didn't have the time to do that on all characters male females five faces 180 per it was mad this is what i would spend my time on this was the first day of confinement uh, this is what i was going to occupy myself with for the first days of the confinement trying to find a solution and of course in all logic the solution is simple we had to redo the entire folder entirely oh what folder was she gonna have to do entirely she had to do so okay the skeletal bodies of the characters so the folders would be cleaner and they would be renewed they would be fresher the the old characters have done their time in any way so they were due a change after 10 years and the game is beautiful and it evolves in all directions of maps the assets are glorious and beautiful, the maps are beautiful, the characters also had to follow suit and evolve in this direction, so you've understood it correctly. It was not for Unity that I've made these characters, she did not make these for Unity. And in fact it was at that moment, I did not even know of the project Unity that it was happening. Uh, for me it was just a character revamp, character design revamp, just like we've done with areas like Brackmarsh is shown here, Bonta. Yeah, like for example, uh, we give it a little renewal hit, boom, we renew, we rejuvenate areas. I thought this is why I was doing this piece of work, right? But with these characters, I started with the eye up naturally. I wanted to start with the ladies and for them to be much simpler, don't laugh. I've put them all in underwear, not to show them in a naked state, but rather to start working on the body without <laughs> without any clothes. She was looking for a simple body shape morphology. Uh, not, not simple, something nice. So I saw a lot of uh, remarks and observation made to her about the, she called them the mega thighs. <laughs> that sounds like a robot or something like that. <laughs> mega thighs, so big thigh size. <laughs> and she pronounces it. Quiz instead of quiz. <laughs> she has a weird pronunciation and she made the joke. Yes, I do pronounce it like this. <laughs> this is why I've done some mega thighs. It was because I got some inspiration from the Xa artist simply. I don't know who this Xa guy. Oh, okay. Um, these are his official illustrations. So this is her inspiration for the thigh size. All right. So Za is an artist on Instagram and she's getting inspiration from this. They, she found it peculiar that the characters that we have or had at the time are not closer to the actual illustrations in the official Dofus magazines and official sources of the game itself. Alright, for her he's closer to the source, the pure origin uh, center of what Dofus artistic design is, the roots of the original idea of what Dofus should look like. And she could only get inspiration from that because she thought that was the origin of it, right? So she, she thinks she's doing something good by getting close to what she thinks is the source. Oh, I can already see the problems coming in the horizon. <laughs> oh no. She's given a proverb here. We get inspiration from the greats, as we say in France. And she's right, these are the gods of every class. And you see how they're curvy and full and very well bubbling and full of life. On top of that, he even made an art book that you can where we can find all of his work. And I greatly advise you to look at it because it's magnificent, it's beautiful. He always drew wives with generous proportions <laughs> she's being politically correct <laughs> a little bit glamorous so why not continue in this trend un peu glamour glamorous generous and why not continue uh down this road for the game generally and i have also of course i've added my own little personal touch onto this i've mixed the idea of the pure vision the closest artistic duration direction source that i could find and i've added some of my own personal touch onto them just a little spice on top you know a little bit of a <laughs> that <laughs> and this is why for the choices of bodies and faces I kept those that we already have, the base ones that we've already have. I did not want to make drastic, radical changes. 
but just a little bit softer on what we already had. So I've refined the base face so as, oh my god, this is beautiful. I really like what I'm hearing here. So she's taken the base face and she's made it move from a juvenile stage into adulthood. She has done what we have done in real life. When we played the game, we were juvenile, we were young, we had baby faces, but now we've done some growing up. Some of us can't grow a mustache yet, but most of us can. <laughs> so she gave them a little bit of uh, adult age. She injected some aging into the characters while keeping them closer to their origins and as close to their base face as possible. This is why I think we like them, because we recognize all the characters in them, but they look a bit more our age. I think this is what I meant when I say um, uh, it's a sort of insult to the average age of the player base, because I'm getting a character that does not resemble me, doesn't look like me, it looks like a baby. That's why I thought they were marketing it towards a younger audience that would perhaps see themselves in those characters, I don't know. And it's the same for other classes. I've used the base faces as they are right now, and I've modified as a result. I did not start from nothing or scratch, and for, this, for the graphical style and the colorization, when I was making sets, for example, I make the colorizations with shades that break, and uh, shades, and some very light shades. This is bash, this is intense. I just wish it was all in one YouTube video that was loud, so I can hear it and translate it real time instead of uh, staccato. Two minute at a time, sound bites. So she's saying, I can't, I've lost the thread here. So what is she saying here towards the end? We understand what she's done with the faces and bodies, let's say. She's taken the base and given them a little, injected some age into them to make them a bit more adult. But she started from what we already had. And, it's, and here she's saying the same thing I have done for the graphical style and the colorization. I've done the same when I'm making sets. It's a colorization with shades and light gradients. Mm, I think we need to listen to the other part to understand what she means about that. And some light gradients that give it a, a touch of modernity. The idea is that the sets are already conceived to be able to integrate with new character designs. Wow, okay, okay. Uh, and so that we did not need to redo all the sets or even small retouching, you know, re having to redo some parts of them. So the global style that I wanted to start with, so the global style that she wanted to operate under is a more mature design language for the characters, sets and everything, because in her vision and how I saw things, so it's a strategy game with a beautiful history, sometimes dark, and I had difficulty transposing that or imbuing, infusing this whole description that she's given here into the characters that looked juvenile, that looked childish in this universe. Even, if anything, just for their spectacular, as a respect for their spectacular um, uh, uh, spell animations and things like that. So she wanted characters that did not look like they were made for children or were childish themselves. Right, so these characters that look juvenile and childish and have spectacular spell animations and things like that, um, she was finding it really hard to give them a proper design that would match. And listen to the point here. The, the difficulty that she's having was with the disconnect between the lore, the story, how dark it is and how fascinating and stuff that is happening all in the background and everything behind. And then you go to the characters, they also have spectacular spell animations and they're doing these great things in the story and progressing and whatever. And then when you look at the characters, they look like a lemon, they look like a child. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It doesn't follow that a, a character that is participating in this universe and doing all these great things looks like that. <laughs> That's what she's making. She finds it really hard to make it them with their current childish design look like they were someone that would participate in this big story and amazing thing that is happening. But again, this is my personal opinion, not me, her personal opinion. There is also the fact that we had grown up with these characters and the average age of characters surely has augmented, she has grown. And it would please us to have characters that are slightly more adult. For men, I saw them badass, muscled, 
This is for you, Tis. You've asked me if I had a dad bod. I'm shredded. I've got a six pack and I'm muscular. No, I'm joking. I definitely do have a dad bod. <laughs> I've not seen the inside of a gym in about two years and I run once a week when I feel like my back is going to literally break and I feel like I need to do some exercise. Then I take the dog for a run. <laughs> right, so her vision for men, for the male characters, was for them to be badass and muscly. So for some of them to be muscular and bulky and badass and for others to be not too imposing, to be very slightly thin and less imposing, but very well drawn at the level of the body. She's contrasting some males with other males. Some she drew badass and muscular, and others were understated but looked sharp like the Zelor. So these were her first tests. So what we're seeing right now, her absolute first drafts, let's say. First, she had this vision that she explained to us, and then her first attempt at putting all of that down resulted in this. So this was never going to be the final definitive version. So what we got to see was a draft. And uh, she has taken into account today that she is more mature and has more experience. And now currently, after all the growing up she has done, she would love to go back and redo a version two of those drawings. So we as a global player based community went nuts for drafts for her first initial drafts we went crazy for those and she's saying right now that as it stands today she would love to go back and do a version 2 which means she's not happy with this she thinks she can do way better than this holy smokes holy smokes what what <laughs> with many 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 things that i want to correct uh notably the size of the characters themselves and seeing the direction that Dofus has taken, the characters need to be a bit smaller. Because now, they look a lot like Wakfu. They look Wakfu-esque. So she's saying the characters were a bit Wakfu-esque. The direction that Dofus has taken is to sh shrink them, make them smaller. In any case, what I wanted, and what I always still do want right now, is that Dofus have its own proper style. I think she's bothered by the resemblance and the sort of common denomination that is happening across the entire universe where Wakfu looks like Dofus, looks like Waven, looks like Cross Maga. Which is a bit annoying because we like to be independent and have our own game, but we don't get to decide on that. But what she wanted essentially is that Dofus has his own unique style that differentiates it from other games. You can see three games, same character, three designs. For well, the animation, oh, she she did the first test in Victorial rather than in Kroki Desa, the draft, the drawing draft, because I wanted immediately to see how to decompose the skeleton of the character. She's put in a little uh, addendum here. He, I have to draw the five faces and and the elements on extra for the animation to work correctly. Oh, she only had this one face that she, or she designed one face to see what the animation looks like just from that angle. So she did it in Victorial. She wanted immediately to see how to decompose the skeleton and see if it works well for animation. So to help herself, I had used the animation that were already made to see what that would result in. So it's not very clean, as you can see it there, but it amused her to do that. She found it fun and hilarious doing that. And then the, the idea that she had was to, for there to be two different bodies, for males and for females, a small body and a body with a, a what, taller, taller pants, larger pantalon, so that there is diversity and change between um, the shape of the characters. She wanted variety in the shapes. She was looking for a solution for the animation to work on all the four bodies. I thought that all the females and males had to have the same body, but in reality, it could not possibly work. Otherwise, the characters would look the same quite a lot, for her taste at least. And in any case, it doesn't matter if they, do, if they have one more animation to make, so what? Because if we want a quality game, we had to give ourselves the means. So she, she didn't want to work on that stuff very fast and just have some functional thing that to push out there. She wanted to take her time, make stuff that is quite good, adapted, despite having to do the work four times and create separate bodies and things like that because she thought the quality was necessary 
for the game that we love. Even if it takes a lot more time, the result will not go unnoticed and even would please the people who use it and enjoy it. The first tests were sent to my mana. Ooh, this is where it gets spicy. Now we move on to the other bit where she had all these thoughts, she made the first designs, and now she's going to communicate with the company. This is where it gets heated, I feel. So she's explained everything about how uh, the, the context behind the pro start of her problems with the company. Now she's made her first drafts and she's communicating them to her manager. Right. So we've got to the bit where she's talking about her vision, everything she's worked, she's made the first uh, designs and why the technical technical constraints behind it, the, te the technology and the difficulty of the designs that are old, her vision, where it comes from, the designs, her inspiration, and she puts everything down on paper and she makes some designs. And now she communicates that to her manager. Ooh, you, 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 as the French would say. My first tests, were sent to my manager, who had helped me correct some minor things, like the isometries, so the, the feet, uh, and for me the feet were always a big problem. I do not know really and still how to make them beautiful. And she's making jokes there, uh, eclate, these are completely ruined, 0 out of 20, what the hell is this, lol, very, very rubbish design. She, She's saying here that she struggles with designing feet to make them look pretty. I will work on it later, that's what she tells herself. I'll, I'll do something basic now and I'll work on it later. I had time to do the first test, so she did the first test on the Any and Sadi. Hold on. Right, so she did IOPS, Anies and Sadis. she worked on them. As we, we can clearly see what she means here. So she can see what she means here. She makes beautiful character designs on the face, the bodies, the shapes, the thighs, everything looks really cool, the costumes and everything. And she struggles with feet, so she goes with a very simple design and she'll worry about it later. And she did three uh, main designs. She worked on the eye up, the eye up as we can see, sharp as hell, I really like this. Then the Annie and the Sandy. From this point onwards, the problem with her PC was fixed. So she had to stop working on this and resume her principal activity, which is sets. Cosmetic sets that she works on, this is her work. And uh, on top of that, she gets her laptop fixed and now she has to stop working on the character designs and she goes back to working on cosmetic sets. At this moment right here, I was working on the panoply of the Sacri Goddess. Uh, she was more looking forward to working on the characters, so she's already missing the old projects she was working on. It was the coolest mission or project I have ever had. So as as soon as I finished my work, her actual work with the cosmetic sets that she's showing us here, on my free time, I continued a couple more classes, except for the what comes next is there was no next. <laughs> I stayed in my in my job as a 2D graphist, make items and that's it, make cosmetic items and that's it. So I understood that I did all of that work on the character designs for nothing, but it was all right. It, it brought me great joy and pleasure working on that. I would have loved what it would give, what it would result in if I continued working on that project. <laughs> Did you see that joke uh, she posted there? <laughs> a drago turkey with a Gucci hat. <laughs> a Transformers body in a Gucci hat. <laughs> so she was hoping to see what she was sort of secretly looking forward or hoping, sort of asking herself what would have come of that project if she continued working on it and it made it to the final game. How would the characters have evolved? How would they look like today? And I started hearing about Unity only six months later, so September 2020. I've heard that there was a graphist coming from Waven. What? 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 that was coming to Dofus for that, for the Project Unity. This is it. I hope I answered some questions. Thank you very much for your support, for appreciating my work. I know very well that I can't please everyone, and I did my absolute best. I tried to do my best in getting feedback from the maximum number of people in game, whether it be in game, on forums, on social networks, while she listened to feedback and everything from people, while keeping her own unique style. So she, yeah, so she's saying she's trying to put her um, mark, to leave her mark on a video game that she loved so much. 
by keeping her true to her own style, but at the same time listening to feedback from players on the forum, social media, and all of that. Everybody that sent her feedback and stuff like that. So she tried to play both sides and do everything that she could. And I'm really sorry that I could not satisfy everyone. And in fact, I think that it's impossible to satisfy everyone at the end of the day. But what is possible and the principle, the ideal for her is to reach as many people as possible and touch them in beautiful ways. But at the same time, that's the ideal. But oh, and she's oh wow, she's apologizing for everyone that was displeased by her work or that did not who's she's apologizing to people who really did not like her i don't know why she would do that she's she's just apologizing for people that did not enjoy her work and they like it when it comes to unity i have loads of things to say but it's but the best is that i stay in my own place regarding my opinion i don't want to hurt anyone even involuntarily but i can explain some things to you now that you know how characters function and work in the background you likely will have understood how the Unity characters are, were conceived and, and designed. So this started from similar bodies for all of them, for that the group symbol can be perfectly replaced. So she's saying, I've explained all the difficulty that we have had previously with the character designs, the skeletal bodies and everything there is to it, the groups that she described and things like that. And now she's moving on to the next part, the company decided to go with simplicity one body for all so you make one change it applies across all of them very simple very easy very convenient but at the same time the thing the the main thing that she's mentioned here that is of interest to me is that someone from waven is coming for the unity project which means it's not her because she only works for on cosmetics and there's someone from Waven, which sort of explains the artistic direction that we don't like because it doesn't look like dofus it clearly shows that someone not dofus minded designed the current characters that we have in unity and now it's starting to make sense now we have closed the loop so now we understand how everything works in the background she has given us a lot of context and now we understand that the unity project they've used they went on a basis of one skeletal body for all that made things which announces the arrival of costumes, items that will be placed on the head without problems. You won't have hair that inter interferes negatively with it. So that was the biggest problem she had with the previous version is that costumes were incredibly difficult to make. And I think uh, Papino mentioned this a handful of times during the artistic direction uh, live, which I've translated this up on my YouTube. They had a big problem with costumes now in 2.0 we have a very small number of costumes and that is why now we get the full image of why they were difficult and now she's saying with unity and the unification of the skeletal bodies do you know what now it's so simple to have costumes before we had a um, the items will be placed well on the head right now without having hair that transcends and exits and looks wonky and weird because before we had a piece of software to layer the costumes and the, the the items, ceremonial item or whatever they're called, on top of the head. And you had to place the hat class by class. So you had to do the work for every single class, face by face, which was very long and tedious. Oh yeah, and that would produce, so you had to do all of that work so you could have a beautiful design without anything interfering, the hair going through the helmet or something like that. And at the same time, when you click on an emote, the animation is fluid and you don't have holes or things breaking or things like that. So when it comes to the graphical choice of shadows, they went with a light that comes from above and you have a faded shadow at the bottom which gives a 3d aspect to the character and makes it so the animation also works well this is good so there's no breakage and it's true that it gives it a little mobile game aspect this is i think what i've noticed uh, on its whole it gives a mobile game as aspect because i don't know if it's on purpose or not what i understood her is that the graphical chart was for the animation i think i've finished here i've given you everything uh, don't hesitate if you have any other questions. It's always interesting to know how uh, things are made behind the scene. Thank you for watching this video all the way until the end. And I say to you, bye. Right. And she adds one last piece of text. Uh, this video is really made to explain how things are made in the background, under the hood, and the context behind that. But now it is time to turn the page concerning my characters. 
Now we understand the workload in the background and everything that I've shown you right here in these 10 minutes represent approximately 1%. So you can imagine the work that is being done behind Unity. I think it's also worth, it's also a must to recognize the work that the teams are doing in Dofus right now and see how they evolve things. Don't forget that when you put a comment, it's a human being at the other end of it. And it can be hard to read comments at times. Beautiful. It's a, it's a, it's a sad uh, situation. She was never meant... Uh, I think her biggest mistake was uh, sharing the... Um, was sharing those drawings before. I think she, she saw the timing was terrible for her. Because she mentioned those drawings right before they were going to mention Unity. And what has happened in effect is she primed us. Here's what happened. She put those drawings, we anchored on those, and we started expecting those for Unity, so we had high hopes. But the team never promised us anything like that. I'm starting to understand it now. They never said we're going to give you exactly those kind of designs. It was just her working on that because she had a difficult time logging into the servers and working on her actual job, which is cosmetic sets. So that was a side project for her. She shared the first draft with people online and people were like we really love this we like this and the company's like you fucked it you fucked up you've ruined it for us and now when they released i see it now do you guys see it <laughs> holy shit so when now they released their uh, artistic design we had already seen her work and we started to be like what wh why can't we have that she sort of ruined it for the company as a whole by sharing those images <laughs> Oh my god. Holy shit. So the story is not what we thought it was. It's a completely different beast. It's an accident that she did not intend for and that the company is having to deal with despite not wanting to deal with that. It's unintended consequences of her not being able to log into the company network from home because of COVID. Holy shit. What? What? That is nuts. <laughs>
that doesn't put you or me as a manager in a company just by buying a product. The example I've given to the person who uh, commented on my video earlier is... Uh, so this is why I have high hopes, Alan, and everybody who said, why do you have high hopes? Because when I thought about it as well, there is one problem that we all sort of share is the character design. And if they fix that, literally one thing, there's one thing that they can fix and make us all happy immediately. Yes, we will have issues with other stuff, but nothing that they can't really fix. That's great. Do you see why I have high hopes? Did I demonstrate why I have high hopes? I've boiled it down to one problem. If they focus on that one thing, that's it, problem solved.